In this example, we'll integrate sine squared of x times cosine cubed of x. And again, we're gonna use u substitution, but before we do, we need to use a trig identity. Now we know that either u is going to equal sine of x or u is going to equal cosine of x. But as things are written, if u equals sine of x, this will turn into u squared. But then we have cosine cubed, which complicates things for du. Similarly, if we let u equal cosine of x, this will be u cubed, but then we have something like du squared. So in both cases, we're not ready yet to set up u substitution. But thinking back to what we mentioned in the last example, we need to have a single cosine or sine to serve as our du. So we can either split up this sine squared into sine of x times sine of x, or we can split up this cosine cubed into cosine squared times cosine. In either case, we're breaking off one power of sine or cosine and setting it aside to serve as du. Now if you think about this, if we split this into sine of x times sine of x, or if we split this into cosine squared of x times cosine of x, in the first case, if we let du be sine of x, there's an extra sine that's hanging out by itself that won't work with the substitution. So we're kind of stuck there. But if we try on the other side, to let du equal cosine of x, now there's a cosine squared left alone. And it turns out we have a special trick for dealing with cosine squared and rewriting it in terms of sine squared using the Pythagorean identity. So that's our trick, that's our helpful tool that will get us around this roadblock. If we split off one cosine, what's left is an even power cosine squared which can be rewritten in terms of sine. Which means if we let du equal cosine, then everything else can be rewritten in terms of sine, or in other words, in terms of u. That's the approach, and we're gonna work through that carefully in a few steps, but we can already see out in front of us the roadmap of where we're headed and see how the process is going to work. I mention all this because in a minute we're gonna write down a general process for integrating ones of this type, and even now we can start to see glimpses of what that process might involve. But we'll get to that in due time. So for now, we're gonna split this up and rewrite this as the integral of sine squared of x times cosine squared times cosine. So all I've done is broken this cosine cubed into cosine squared times cosine. In a sense, I'm reserving one of the cosines to be du, which tells me everything else needs to be re rewritten in terms of u or in terms of sine of x. So this part is okay. This part we still need to deal with and rewrite that in terms of sine of x. So we remember that sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x equals one which means we can rearrange this to get cosine squared equals one minus sine squared. Or vice versa, sine squared equals one minus cosine squared, but this is the one that's useful to us in this example. So we have sine squared of x times one minus sine squared of x times cosine of x dx. And at this point, we can go ahead and define our u substitution and everything can be substituted cleanly. So if we let u equal sine of x and du equal cosine of x dx, here's our du, and then everything else is in terms of sine and can be replaced with u. So we'll have u squared times one minus u squared times du. And now the simplest way to integrate this is simply to distribute. So we get u squared minus u to the fourth du. And we can integrate that term by term, getting one third u to the third minus one fifth u to the fifth 
plus C. And our last step, we can replace all the U's with sine of X. So one third sine cubed of X minus one fifth cosine to the fifth of X plus C. And there's our answer. And as always, we could differentiate to check. Now, of course, if we differentiate this the way it's written, odds are it won't look like what we started with because we use this Pythagorean identity. And so it's rewritten in a different form. But you could graph them, for instance, to show that they are equivalent. So already thinking ahead to our process, notice what we did here. We picked off one cosine and set it aside. And then the remainder we wrote in terms of sine so that our u substitution would work, letting u equal sine of x. If we reverse this and had sine cubed times cosine squared, we would do the opposite. We would reserve one copy of sine by itself and then rewrite the other sine powers in terms of cosine and let u equal cosine and so on. So we can already see that the helpful thing to look for is to look for an odd power to begin with. So if cosine in this case was odd, we notice that pulling one cosine off by itself leaves an even power of cosine that we can rewrite in terms of sine. That's the key that we're gonna see when we write down the full procedure in a few minutes after seeing another example. So let's look at another example first. We can integrate sine cubed of x by itself. And again, thinking through that process that we did on the last one, we're going to separate off one power of sine by itself and the remainder will be sine squared. So we'll rewrite this as sine squared of x times sine of x. And again, the reason for doing that is that the remainder, this sine squared, can be rewritten in terms of cosine. Specifically, we can say sine squared of x equals one minus cosine squared of x. So we can replace that with one minus the cosine squared of x times sine of x dx. So that now if we define u equals cosine of x, du equals negative sine of x, or I'll say negative du equals sine of x to make things a little bit easier to work with. So now we can replace sine of x dx with negative du and then one minus cosine squared of x becomes one minus u squared. And then of course we can distribute here and get negative one plus u squared. And when we integrate, we get negative u plus one third u to the third plus c. And then replacing u with cosine again gives us negative cosine of x plus one third cosine to the third power plus c. Again, the pattern holds that if we have an odd power, if we separate off one copy of that function and set that aside to serve as du, then we'll let the other function, in this case, cosine equal u. And so that means whatever we haven't separated off, whatever is left behind, needs to be completely rewritten in terms of cosine. In this case, we had sine squared left, so we could rewrite it in terms of cosine using one minus cosine squared. So this brings us to our general procedure for integrating sine to some power times cosine to some other power. There's a lot of text here, but we'll go through it. And the general process hinges on this idea of looking for an odd power and splitting that off to serve as du. So this is just written down in full detail what we've already observed, and if you can work out the problems we've already done, you really know what this says. It's just laid out for you in full detail so that you can follow it and use it as a template for other problems. So the first thing you'll do is look for an odd power. You'll look for one of them being odd. And if both happen to be odd, you can choose either one. If they're both odd, probably one of them will be easier. It turns out whichever one's smaller will be easier to work with, and we'll see an example of that later on. 
So we'll leave that for now. But if both are odd, theoretically you can use either one and it'll work just fine. But if one of them is odd, take one copy of that function and break it off from the rest. So what will be left behind when you do that is an even power. For instance, when we had sine cubed and we split off one sine, what's left is sine squared. So the piece that you split off is going to serve as du, which means the other function will be u, which means you need to rewrite everything except for that piece that you split off in terms of the other function. If you split off sine, you need to write everything in terms of cosine. If you split off cosine, you need to rewrite everything else in terms of sine, and you're always using this Pythagorean identity to do so. Once you do that, I just say use u substitution to integrate, following through the process that we've seen in several examples now, du is the function you split off, and the one that you rewrote everything else in terms of, that's going to be u. So you already know what u and du will be before you get to this step, which makes it a pretty easy u substitution, and you generally just have a polynomial in terms of u that's pretty easy to integrate. So at that point, the u substitution is a very straightforward one. Most of the work is figuring out how to rearrange things and how to use the Pythagorean identity to rewrite things. So that's the general process if one of them is odd. And if both powers are even, that's when you use the half angle identities. So you'll use the right one. And we'll see an example later on in another video of where all powers are even and you can use a half angle identity. But the process is very similar and you'll see that worked out. Those cases are a little more straightforward. It's the ones where one power is odd that you have to think a little bit about which way to make things work. So we'll do a few more examples of this, but all the powers of sine and cosine can be done according to the process that's laid out here.